Hey, it's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Baofeng BFF8 HP Pro from Baofeng Tech, and we'll get to it right after this. Let's see what you get in the box. You get two antennas. The first one, the longer one, covers 136 to 174 megahertz, 400 to 520. The shorter one covers 145 to 230 and 245 to 260. You get a wrist strap, belt clip, owner's manual, technical TED, earpiece, and mic. You get a charging cradle, USB charging cable, since this battery will charge from USB-C, 2500 milliamp hour battery, and the radio. Now we're gonna take a look around the radio. The SK-1 top button here, Quick press puts you into the commercial FM stations. Press it again to get out. A long press will activate the alarm. As you can see, it's on. Long press to get back out of that. Then you have the push to talk. This bottom button, the short press is programmable. It came with the alarm already programmed in it. Long press opens up the squelch. Across the top, you have your antenna, power and volume knob. Where the flashlight used to be, this is now for the GPS. You have a 1.77 TFT screen. This is your VFO memory button. Transmit receive indicator light. This button here will switch you back and forth between band A and band B. This one gets you into the menu. These two arrows move you through the menu. This one gets you out of the menu. Long press on this one will lock the radio. Long press on the zero brings up the weather channels. Long press on the hashtag down here will start scanning and it will also scan for the weather channels. Long press to get out of it. If you long press the number one button, it shows you the voltage of your battery. Long press on number two, and it switches you from the frequency to the channel number and back to the main screen. On the right side, you have the usual K1 plug. For the battery, down here you have the door for the USB-C, and this is your charging indicator light. Your pads for if you're using the charging cradle. This button up here will release the battery, and you have two screws already inside here for the belt clip. Now the way I'm understanding this, if you press and hold the VFO memory button, you can get into scanning of all the UHF channels, the VHF, you can change that by pressing the hashtag, the 200 megahertz, 350, and back to UHF. And to get out of that, just press and hold the VFO memory button again. Now to get into GPS, you're going to want to press and hold the menu button, and that gets you in there. And then you can use these to check out different I think there's like 20 of these contact things. And then you can get back out by just hitting the exit arrow. If you press and hold the exit button, that'll get you the stopwatch. To start it, press the menu button and it starts going. And then you can stop it, but there is no lap timer. So as soon as you hit the menu button again to go, it starts over. To get out of it, just hit the exit button. You can press and hold the arrow buttons to go through the channels quicker. And it'll go the other way if you press the down arrow. At the time of recording this video, this radio is going for $69.89 on the 
Baofeng Tech website. Now they're saying that it is an 8 watt radio, that it's also a tri-band, which means 2 meters, 70 centimeter, and 1 and a quarter meter. It's IP54 rated. And they're saying this is the seventh generation, I guess, of the UV5R. You can program a thousand channels. It has GPS. You can also do listen to the air bands. Has no weather mode and USB-C charging. On Amazon, it's also $69.89, so there's no savings there, but you might get it a little faster if you have Prime. And again, it has all the same information. And this is where you'd also download, like if you lose your owner's manual, you can download one here. And there is a firmware update. In another video, I'll show you how to do that. They also have the programming software. And this does work on Chirp which is always a handy feature. Here's some of the particulars. The power levels for two meter and 70 centimeter, it's one watt, three watt, eight watt. And for one and a quarter meter, it's one watt, three watt, five watt. And we'll be testing that a little later on. Let's take a look at the menu. Okay, I've lowered the lights so that you can see the menu a little better. Now on this top one, you see zone. Go into the zone, you can select the zone, and I, I've put in a few different ones. So you can program this radio for whatever area you're in. Since I go to Las Vegas, my son lives in Texas. And to add a zone is extremely simple. Just hit add. And I go to Arizona a lot. So you just use these buttons like you would an old the telephone. You just keep pushing it to go through. And if you make a mistake like that, just hit the back arrow and it'll take you back. Once you've got everything in there that you want, click OK. It says save. Go back up to zone select and there you have them. And you can delete them and edit them as you need. And you have a scan feature, radio settings. This is where you get your steps and squelch and all the usual Baofeng things. Box, timeout timer, backlight, key beeps. You can personalize it however you want. Also has GPS in here. Talks about the receiver. Make sure it's on if you want. If it'll use battery though, if it's on. Set your time zone. How you're driving if you're using kilometers or miles per hour. Your GPS mode. You can either do GPS, BDS, or both. This is where you program a channel. It makes it very simple to have everything in one area. You can put it your channel name. You receive frequency, transmit frequency, transmit power, wide or narrow, receive CTCSS or DCS, and same for transmit, CTCSS, DCS. You can do encryption if you want, but you're not supposed to. Signaling. Channel display mode. Speaker mute. If you want to add it to a scan list. Busy channel lockout. Storing it in the memory, deleting it from the memory. And then this gives you your radio info. Gives you the ID, the firmware number, which there is a firmware update, 0.33, and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Hardware, 1.0. Then it takes you back to the top. Now when the radio comes, you see it has 70 centimeter calling. They went ahead and they input 2 meter one and a quarter meter and 70 centimeter. It's already input for the national calling frequencies of each of those, because this is a tri-band radio. I'm gonna show you how to program a repeater in here from the front panel. It's actually quite simple. 
First thing you do, switch to VFO, and we want 145220. Once you got that input, go ahead and go into the menu. It's probably going to be a little hard to see here. You're going to want to go down to program channel. Go into frequency, and you see it's already got it in there, 145220. Back, back out. You can check your transmit power. Make sure you're on either high, medium, or low. Check your bandwidth. Make sure you're on wide. This one does not need receive CTCSS. Or DCS. We're going to go to transmit CTCSS. We want to go down to 103.5. Got that saved. Don't need to worry about encryption, signaling, speaker mute. The offset, I'm going to change that. Go down one more to direction, and this one is minus and if you want to save it and to get there you can press and hold this to get through the channels quicker press ok back back out switch back over to memory and there it is now if you want to name it as you can see, I've already got Clara in there because it remembers whatever the last one was. Go ahead and press on here and then go up to the program channel. And you can see channel name and here you can change it if you need to. You can make any other altercations you need. Now let's see if this works. WJ6F testing. I went and changed out the antenna to make sure that this works. WJ6F testing. And you heard the repeater work come back, so we know it's working just fine. Now we're going to check the power on this radio. You're going to want to worry about this one up here with the W next to it. This is just the SWR, and we're using a dummy load. Now the power rating per the website is on low power is one watt, medium three watt, and high power is eight watt with the exception of one and a quarter meter, which is five watts for high power. So we're gonna start low. You can see the L inside this little square right here. I'm gonna start with the two meter calling frequency. And on low, we're at 2.77. Let's check medium. Way you do that, just press and hold the th number three. Now we're at medium. And we're at 5.37 watts. Now let's go to high power. And we're at 11.28 watts. Now we're going to go to one and a quarter meter. And we'll go back down to low. And on low, we're at 5.3 watts. Now we're on medium. And we're at 5.4 watts, 5.38. Now let's check high. And we're at 5.6 watts, 5.58. Okay, let's jump up to 440, 70 centimeters. We'll go back down to low. We're at 3.89, 3.87, medium. We're at 6.03, 6.02. Now let's check high. And we're at 9.15 watts. Well, it definitely passes on everything it said, a little higher than what it says for low and medium, definitely higher on the high for two meters. Now we're gonna check the harmonics of this radio. Got everything set up. 
we're on low power, as you can see by the L up here above the word calling, and we're on two meters. Got attenuators on here. So let's give this a whirl and see where it sits. Now the harmonics must be below the blue line to be a pass. And it doesn't look like we're gonna have a pass on this. As you can see by delta two, we're only at negative 26.4 dB, which we're not below the 25 microwatt blue line. What does that mean? Basically this radio is not legal to transmit in the US. All in all, I do like this radio. Unfortunately, with that harmonic there for that spurious emission, that's kind of a no-go. It has all the features I like. This one actually goes above the rated power. It's a great screen, easy to read, easy to program. There's a lot of great features to this radio. Love the fact that it's a tri-band radio. The only thing I wish some of these companies would do is when you have a tri-band radio, if there's a way to just put in a single antenna that covers all three. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these other videos. And again, thanks for watching.